Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Hunger Games Original Movies. Welcome to the near future dystopian country of Pan Am, where the capital is rich and the 12 districts are poor. District 12 is the poorest of them all. It's a coal mining town where basically everyone is going hungry. Our hero, Katniss Everdeen, has managed to survive by sneaking out into the forest to hunt with her trusty bow and arrows and her hot best friend, Gale. But today it's time for The Hunger Games, a battle royale where teens from each district fight to the death. It's a punishment to keep the districts in line, and it's called The Hunger Games, I think, because the winner gets a lifetime supply of food. Their capital representative, Effie Trinket, is here to pick the lucky tributes. And because it's a random lottery, that's The Hunger Games' motto, may the odds be ever in your favor. Katniss's little sister Prim is finally eligible, and the odds are not in her favor. She's picked immediately. But Katniss won't let that happen. I volunteer as tribute. Yeah, she's taken her sister's place. That's a really noble thing to do, so the crowd gives her the three-fingered salute in solidarity. Now, Gale does not volunteer to come with her. He needs to stay behind and look after her family, so the male tribute is Peta Malark. So Katniss and Peta take a train to the capital, furnished with more food than they've ever seen. The tributes are coached by past winners from their district, but the only one from District 12 is the drunken Hamish. And his best advice is enjoy the open bar, cause you're gonna die. Yeah, the low number districts are much better off, and they have academies where kids spend their whole lives training for the Hunger Games. One of them wins the Hunger Games almost every year. Kids from the outlying districts are basically fodder. Now, the Hunger Games is a televised event. It's the most popular reality show in the capital. Getting the audience to like you is incredibly important. They can sponsor their favorites with help in the games. Winning over the crowd isn't Katniss's strength, but she's saved by her costume designer, Cinna. Instead of dressing them as coal miners, Cinna dresses them as coal in cool flaming outfits that makes the crowd go wild. And in her interview, with Hunger Games host, Caesar Flickerman. He puts her in a flaming dress, which gets her the nickname, the Girl on Fire. It's also important to impress the game runners, but when she shows off her bow and arrow skills, they're not paying attention. So she aims at them and hits the apple out of the mouth, gives them a cheeky bow and gets a high rating. Peta, meanwhile, is much better at talking, and his strategy to win over the crowd is admit he has a crush on Katniss, which is tragic because it's not a team game. There's only one winner, only one of them can survive. And the audience loves the star-crossed lovers, so Katniss goes along with it, but Peta's not faking, he really does like her. In fact, he saved her one day when she was starving, he burned the bread on purpose so he could give it to her. But now it's time for the Hunger Games. Right in the middle are a bunch of supplies, which are very valuable, but going for them's dangerous. It's a huge brawl, and like half the kids are killed immediately. So Katniss runs the other way. She's hiding out in the forest, playing to her strengths with her survival skills. Her plan is to hide in a tree and let everyone else fight it out. But hiding in trees does not make good television, so the game master Seneca Crane has to step in. It's not just a fight to the death. The whole arena's filled with traps that they can unleash to spice things up. The strongest tributes form a temporary alliance, and Peta's joined up with them to save his own skin. Pretty soon they hunt Katniss down, but Katniss sees another tribute, the little girl Rue, who points out the wasp's nest right above them. And not just normal wasps, genetically engineered super wasps called Tracker Jackers. So Katniss and Rue form an alliance. She reminds her of her little sister Prim, and Katniss wears her lucky bird pin. It's a mocking jay that will mimic the sounds, so she whistles a signal that the birds mimic and that becomes Katniss's theme song. But they can't hide forever. Katniss finally has to kill a guy, and oh no, he killed Rue! She gives Rue a tear-jerking funeral and the three-fingered salute for the cameras. And in Rue's hometown of District 11, this sets the crowd off. Oh, it's a riot. And President Snow does not like that. What he likes are white roses and being a dictator. And he reminds Seneca that the Hunger Games isn't about making good TV, it's about keeping the districts in line. So to spice things up, they announce a rule change. Tributes from the same district can be joint winners together. So Katniss goes to track down Peta, who by the way is good at decorating cakes and so camouflages himself as a rock. The strong kids turned on him and injured his leg. He's gonna die if he doesn't get medicine. So to save his life, Katniss plays to the crowd and kisses him for the cameras. This lets Hamish do his job and get some sponsors for him, so they send in a little parachute care package with some meds. And the whole country's rooting for these two lovebirds, except for Katniss's kinda boyfriend, Gale. For the finale, they sick some mutant killer dogs on him, which chases them to the middle where they fight the last guy. And so they've done it! Katniss and Peta have won! Except they make another announcement, canceling the last one. Yeah, one of you has got to kill the other. But Katniss refuses. She's like, yo, check it. If we both eat these poison berries at the same time, We'll both die, and the Hunger Games gets no winner. And they can't let that happen, it would ruin the games, so they announce, just kidding, you both win, congrats. And President Snow does not like that. They essentially just stood up to the government and got away with it. So he fires Seneca by making him eat some poison berries, and he threatens Katniss, you better make everyone believe that was the act of a girl in love and not to protest against the games. So in Hunger Games, catching fire. As a Hunger Games winner, Katniss and her family get to live in the nice part of District 12. She tries to get back to a normal life and rekindle things with her kind of boyfriend, Gale. But for the cameras, she's madly in love with Peta, and Peta's kind of sad because he thought it was real. 
And now they embark on the Victor's Tour, where they see the capital as a land of extreme excess, compared to the districts which have nothing. Katniss goes off script and accidentally incites a mini rebellion, but these days snow is cracking down hard, so after that Katniss sticks to the cards. But still she's become the symbol of rebellion, and Snow needs to kill her without making her a martyr. And so he has a fun idea for the 75th Hunger Games, a quarter quell, all the tributes will be previous winners. And as the only living winners from District 12, Katniss and Peeta going back into the games. And so they're back on the media circuit, this time she and Peeta get engaged. And Cinna hooks her up with a wedding dress that catches fire and turns into her symbol, the Mockingjay. And President Snow does not like that. And right before the games, he has Cinna killed for his act of defiance. And now it's time for the Hunger Games. This time there's a big lake in the middle. And this time Katniss ain't messing around, she grabs her bow to show him who's boss. And she teams up with this douchebag Finnick who fights with a trident, but he's actually a nice guy who's trying to protect his old deaf grandma. But this arena is much smaller than the last one, and they're chased away from the edge by the Fortnite storm. And tragically, grandma's just slowing them down, she sacrifices herself so they can escape. They make more friends with crazy axe girl and nerdy science guy, and they realize each section has a trap at different times. This arena is a clock. So they form a plan to use lightning tree, lead a coil to the water, electrocute the other team. But meanwhile, Peta made Katniss a necklace with pictures of her family. There's no way they're gonna let us both live this time. I love you, Katniss, it's gotta be you. All Peta is just the sweetest, and Katniss kisses him for realsies. Now Katniss knows their alliance will have to break up soon, and she's maybe gonna shoot first, which is exactly the plan of the new game master, Plutarch Heavensby. Snow chose him because he's a master propagandist, and watching Katniss betray her allies will ruin her image for the rebellion. But in the end, Katniss refuses to kill him. She's not gonna play this sadistic game. With the lightning coming, she ties the cable to her arrow and fires it up at the force field, overloading the whole system. Katniss didn't have a follow-up plan, but luckily someone else did. There's a hover jet waiting to pick her up. Turns out there was a secret plan to get Katniss out of there and bring her to the real rebellion. And so in Mockingjay Part 1, Katniss joins the rebellion at District 13. They thought it was destroyed during the last war, but it survived down in the bunkers. Gale is here too, along with Katniss's family, which is good because District 12 was completely destroyed. Yes, Snow realized he doesn't really need coal. But someone important is not here, it's Peta who was left behind, and the Capitals tortured him to be their poster boy and denounce the rebellion. District 13's leader is President Coin, and they want to use Katniss the Mockingjay to incite the districts to band together. But the fake propaganda video is very lame, so Katniss goes out into the field to inspire people for real, with a camera team following her to get it all on tape. And this inspires the other districts to fight more than ever, in fact they blow up their big electric dam. During the blackout they send in a squad and manage to rescue Peta. But President Snow does like that. He's like, enjoy the reunion, lovebirds. Because, oh, they've brainwashed him to try to kill Katniss. Yeah, his brain is all messed up and Katniss is sad. Then in Mockingjay Part 2, it's time for the real fight against the big fortress in District 2. And it's actually Gale who has the idea, we'll lose a lot of troops trying to storm this fortress, let's just blow up the whole mountain, civilians and all. This is, maybe, a bit of a war crime, but Gale's like, yo, the ends justify the means. And President Snow does not like that. He fires his top general with poison too. Yeah, it wasn't just Seneca, Snow's a poison guy. And now the rebellion has made it to the capital. Katniss and team are staying on the outskirts where they can get good footage, but it's mostly safe. They send Peta too, to show he's joined them. He's doing better, but still not great. But turns out the whole city is rigged with traps. Snow's turned the capital into a Hunger Games arena. In the sewers, they fight some mutant zombies and Finnick dies, which is especially sad because he just got married. And sometimes Peta's brainwashing takes over, so Katniss snaps him out of it with a magic kiss. In the end, President Snow calls all the civilians to his palace. He's gonna use them as human shields. Then he sends in a plane to drop them supplies, but oh, the supplies were bombs! The rebel medics rush in to help, including Katniss' sister Prim. But that was the trap, it's a double bomb, no! But after bombing his own civilians, Snow's whole army turned on him, and the revolution won while Katniss was napping. She goes to talk to President Snow, who by the way, is dying anyway. Apparently, one poisoning he did in his youth, he had to drink from the same cup and didn't get the antidote quite in time, so he's been bleeding out of the mouth for his whole life, and that's why he always wears a rose to cover the scent of the blood in his mouth. But he's like, yo Katniss, why would I bomb my own human shields? It wasn't me. It was President Coin, who then blamed it on me, so my army would desert. She's not trying to free Pan Am, she just wants to take my place. And he might be right, cause she cancels the elections and declares herself president. Plus, earlier, Katniss overheard Gale having the idea for this double bombing, but he didn't know Coin was gonna use it on civilians, and now he feels bad. And worst of all, Coin wants to continue the Hunger Games now just using kids from the capital. And so Katniss Everdeen, the Mockingjay, gets to be the one to execute Snow. But she decides to nip this new dictator in the bud, and oh, she shoots President Coin. 
President Snow thinks that's hilarious, but he is soon killed too. So Katniss is done with revolution. She's ready to just go home. Panem has real elections and it looks like everything's gonna be all right. And after everything Katniss and Peeta have been through, she realizes she does love him for real. We get a brief epilogue where these two live happily ever after, and that's where The Hunger Games comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.